In this video, we're going to talk about the set identities and how we do proofs over sets. So the set identities are going to be very similar to the Boolean equivalencies that we did in module one. These are the laws uh, that we can use uh, with sets. So for example, if we have a set A and we union it with B, this is the same as if we reverse the order. That is the commutative loss. So we can do this with union, or we can do this with intersection. The associative laws allow us to uh, move parentheses around. So we have, if we have A union B in parentheses, union C, now notice they're all unions, there's no change. Um, we can move these parentheses around and have A union B union C. And similarly with intersection form, we have A intersect B intersect C, is equal to A intersect B intersect C. Distributive laws, we can distribute. So here if we have A union with B intersect C, notice here the the two operations are different. So the associative law works when the operations are the same. The distributive law works on the when the operations are different. So here, if we've got this, we can distribute that A union so that we have um, A union B intersect with A union C. So I'm running out of space a little bit, uh, but hopefully that makes sense. And similarly, we can do this with the intersection form. And what we're going to see after we go through these laws is we're going to see how we can do proofs on sets. And each one of these laws was proof, proved using one of our proof techniques. So we'll see how that's done. Identity laws. If we try to union a set with the empty set, well, there's nothing in the empty set, so this is just going to be our original set A. Similarly, if we try to intersect our set with the universal set, that's just going to be A as well. Complement. Complement laws are very similar to the negation laws in Boolean algebra. If I union a set with its complement, I'm going to get the universe. All right, because the set A is union with everything that's not in the set A. So we have everything. Similarly, if we try to intersect the set A with its complement, we're going to have nothing because there's no overlap. Here, just like the double negation, we have, if we take the complement of A, which is everything except for A, and we take that complement, what we're going to be left with is A. And there's no, uh, this really isn't a union form. There's only one form here. Here we've got the idempotent laws. So if we have A and we union it with our with itself, we're going to get A. And similarly, if we take the intersection of A and A, we're going to get A. Universal bound laws, if we union the set A with the universal set U, 
we're going to have the universal set U. Right. This universal set is sometimes written with these little serifs like that. I don't always put them on, bother to put them on though. Um, I always do have distinguish it from the union because it has a tail and union doesn't. Okay, and if we intersect A with the empty set, we're going to get the, inter the empty set. De Morgan's Laws, that should ring a bell. This is the same thing as with Boolean Algebra, except now we can apply them to sets. And in Boolean Algebra, we use negations with sets. The uh, negation is really uh, the complement. So here, if I have A union B complement, this is going to be equal to A complement intersect B complement. And we're going to prove this in a later video. And here, um, if we have A intersect B complement, this is going to be the same as A complement union B complement. All right, the sign, uh, the operation changes when we distribute that complement. The absorption laws, what we're saying is if we union A with the intersection of A and B, think about that for a minute. The intersection of A and B is where do A and B overlap? So it's going to be inside A and it's going to be inside B. And if we union that with A, what we're going to have left is just A. Similarly, if we say A intersect A union B, A union B is going to be what covers both A and B. And if we intersect that with A, we're going to get A back. Complements of U and the universal set and the empty set. Uh, if we take the universal set and we take the opposite of it, the complement, we're going to get nothing left. And similarly, if we have nothing and we take its complement, which is synonymous with negation, we're going to have everything left. Set difference. This is a very useful definition that we will use a lot. If we say A minus B, remember what that means is we take the set A and remove everything that's also in B. So we can write this as A intersect B complement. So again, anytime you see the set difference with the minus sign, this is really what's going on. And that does not have an intersection form. And then finally, this last one, intersection and union, I'm going to write an if-then statement, conditional statement. I'm going to say if A is a subset of B, then, right, what does that mean? A is a subset of B means A is contained within B. So then A intersect B is going to equal A. And similarly, if... A is a subset of B, then these really should be reversed. A union B is going to equal B because A is contained within B. So here are all these set identities listed out and typed up much more nicely than I can write by hand. You can pause this if you want to write any of these down now. And finally, let's talk about proof techniques over sets. So all of these laws exist because somebody sat down and proved them. And we're also going to learn how to do our own proofs over sets. And there's three ways this is typically done. The first is called the element argument. So this is very similar so when we were doing um, direct proofs or indirect proofs, where we generalized from the generic particular, right, where we said something like, let 
ask, be any, uh, even integer. We are generalizing because we're allowing it to be any integer. And it's generic because we're using a variable. I don't, I don't know or care which integer. But it's particular. X is, a, is some integer. Right? So we've talked about that before. Um, here, the element argument uses a similar idea. Um, and the element argument is just a general way of working with sets, just like generalizing from the generic particular is a general way of working with numbers. So we can use the element argument with direct proofs, indirect proofs, and inductive proofs. And we're going to see some examples of those in later videos. Venn proofs, you may have heard of Venn diagrams. Sometimes they're referred to as the Mickey Mouse diagram. Ooh, no, that's not Mickey Mouse. Here's a Mickey Mouse Venn diagram. It's the idea where we draw sets as being contained within a circle, and sometimes these circles overlap in various ways. So we're going to see ways and techniques of doing Venn proofs. Um, one thing you need to know is they're, they're kind of like doing a proof with a truth table, meaning that you have to be really careful uh, that your proof is rigorous. You usually want to include a sentence sort of explaining why your proof proves the problem, or at least uh, walk somebody through how you obtain the diagram from the statement. And then finally, just like with Boolean statements, there's an algebraic proof where we can use uh, these set identities to derive uh, new properties.